Okay, welcome back to COSC 2325. We're going to review some of the things that we talked about in the last video where we just used um, Visual Studio to code. We're going to go over some of those concepts and then start something new. So last time we went over data transfer instructions, transferring data with different types of instructions like um, MOV or moving with zero extension or signed extension. We also looked at um, we looked at addition and subtraction, so the add and the sub um, instructions. And we looked at data related operators and directives and indirect addressing. So let's start with our operand types. So as far as operand types, remember operands are like if you have MOV and then you have a register comma five, you're moving five into a register, There's that's two operands. So MOV requires two operands. It requires um, the destination like what you're moving into so first of all the source what you're moving into the destination so as far as operand types we have immediate operands and these would be this would be a constant a constant integer and these constants would just be encoded with the instructions so they're not saved in a memory location they're not in a register it's just a number five and the number 10, et cetera. And then uh, another type of operand is a register. So one of those two operands in a move instruction can be a register name. The register name is converted to a number and then it's encoded within the instruction. And then we have a memory, which it is a variable. So the memory reference to a location in memory, the memory address is encoded with the instruction um, and the register holds the address of a memory location. When you're looking at what operands your instructions can use, you're going to see um, these shortcuts, um, abbreviations, there, that's the right term. So um, if you're working with move, for example, move can have uh, a reg, reg, meaning you can move from register to register, or you can move from um, a variable, so it would be mem, so a variable would be mem, so memory to a register, or you can move um, from you can move an immediate value into a register or a memory location. So these are just abbreviations that we would use to talk about what you can and cannot do when you are looking at different instructions and the operands that you can use on the right or the left side. So in this example here, it says direct memory operands. So a direct memory operand is a named reference to storage in memory. The name reference label is automatically referenced by the assembler. So this would be just a variable. So we have direct memory operands. So this is directly var1 access a memory location. So var1 is whatever values in var1, this 10H, um, this label here will take us to that memory location where this is found, where 10H, where 10 hexadecimal is found. Move here has two operands. So here we have register mem, register mem. This is an alternate format. We talked about the square brackets just being there to 
um, just to basically show, um, to make it more clear that um, this is a variable, but they're not required. The brackets are not required. We do like to use them a lot when we deal with arrays, and we'll look at that in a second. So in this example, var1 is defined um, as eight bits, one byte, and the 10 hexadecimal stored in var1. Var1 gets moved to the AL register. Remember that AL register is um, eight bits. So I'm gonna just draw this up here for a second. So we have we have the EAX register, E A X, and the EAX register is 32. So I would say from here all the way over here is 32 bits. And I'm just gonna write 32 there, okay? Then if we cut this in half, this is 16 bits and 16 bits. So if we just reference the AX register, the AX register is over here. If you look at the register, you know, when you run your code in um, Visual Studio, you would see we saw that AX was over here. And then we could further divide AX. So AX is 16 bits. So if we define something that's size of a of a word, then we could put it into the AX register because AX is 16, word is 16 bits. If we divide this in half, this here is 8 bits and this is 8 bits. This is the AH and this is AL register. This is 8 bits, and this is 8 bits, okay? So we, we moved var1 into AL because var1 is defined as a byte, and a byte is 8 bits. If you try to put var1 into EAX or AX, it's going to give you an error. It won't let you assemble. It won't assemble, so it will stop you before assembly happens. Move instruction. So just reviewing in the move instruction, this is the source, this is the destination. No more than one memory operands permitted, meaning I can, I can uh, do memory here and maybe move um, a register into memory, or I can put memory here, move memory into a register. CS, EIP, and IP cannot be the destination. So these registers cannot be the destinations. Um, this register here points to the segment where a program that's running begins. So we cannot, we definitely cannot overwrite that. And these are uh, instruction pointers. So an instruction, a whole instruction that's coming in that needs to be executed by the central processing unit is um, this is where we store where that instruction where we point to that instruction so we cannot mess with the instruction pointers we cannot move no immediate to segment moves um, so let's take a look at this here count is um, a variable memory location right so we can put count is one byte, which is eight bits. BL is also one byte, so that's okay. We can move count to BL. Uh, WVAL is size word, which is 16 bits. Word is 16 bits, so we can move 16 bits into AX because we said AX was 16 bits. Here, AL is eight bits. We can move AL into count, which is eight bits, so eight into eight. Um, this one's going to give us an error because WVAL is a word, which is 16 bits. So this is 16 bits. 
and this is 8 bits. So data size is not going to match and it's going to give you that error before it assembles the entire program. Then uh, count is a byte. AX is 16 bits or 2 bytes. So again, these do not, um, not match in size. And then this is 32 bits and count is 1 byte. Not going to work. 8 bits and 32 bits. So all these are different sizes. Um, as far as moving, remember we cannot move. So when we move, we cannot move. We say move. Um, a memory location into a memory location. So mem, we have a memory location here, comma mem, and another memory location. It does not let us do that. That's a no-no. You have to move memory into a register first and then do whatever it is you want to do. All right, in this slide, you're going to look at these instructions and tell me why each of these move statements are invalid. Now this one here is supposed to have a V that's that would be invalid because it doesn't have a B a V, but um so pretend it has the B, it's something else that's invalid. And you can pause the video and then come back and then I'll go over it. So looking at this first one, the reason this one's invalid, so here we have an immediate value and this immediate value 45 is put into a register that we cannot write to. This register is um, the segment register. And remember the segment register points to the segment of data that's used by the running program. So we don't want to mess with that pointer. And that's why that, that one's invalid. Um, this one, this is a 32-bit register, WVAL. It's a WVAL is a word size. Word is 16 bits. So the sizes do not match. So we have size mismatch right here. Sorry, right here. The EIP is the instruction pointer. We cannot write to the instruction pointer. So that's why this one is invalid. This one, we're moving a memory location, uh, BVAL, this memory location, into an immediate um, value. So we can't do that. We, we can't move. Immediate value doesn't have a location. So we can't move a location to it. And then this last one, BVAL, is one byte. Okay, so here we have memory memory. So BVAL and BVAL2 are both memory locations. And we're not able to move memory to memory. We can only move memory to register or register to memory, or we can move an immediate value into memory or into a register. Okay. So another instruction we looked at was a zero extension instruction, moving with zero extension. So when you copy, you can copy a smaller value into a larger destination, but you would either use move CX or move SX. The CX would just um, fill the upper half of the destination with zeros. So here we're moving this binary number into BL, BL is eight, eight bits. And then here we're moving eight bits into 16 bits. So we're moving it to here to these 16 bits. So all this right here, these bits get padded to zero or filled in with zero. The destination must be a register. So with move CX, the only thing you can have here on the left-hand side, the destination can only be a register, cannot be a memory location. Move XX is 
to fill the upper half of the destination with a copy of the source operand sign bit. So if you know that you have a sign number or that you could have a sign number, then use move SX so that when you act, because if you move it without that sign bit, it's not going to it's not going to read the correct value. So if this is the source, if this is what we're moving, and the sign bit is 1, then it fills this with 1. If it has a 0 here, then it fills this with zeros. The destination also must be a register. We looked at the exchange instruction where we can exchange the values of two operands. Remember this is one operand and one operand. At least one of the operands must be a register. No immediate operands are permitted. You cannot have constants here. So you can't have like AX and 5 because you're you're exchanging you've you've got to have these things that are here that you're exchanging in some kind of location. Either a register that holds values or a memory location. So I can have register, 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 variable, register, register, register. So all we're doing with these, it was, we're just exchanging the values. Notice that um, var1 here is word size and so bx is word size. So it does have to be the same size. Here we have two 32-bit registers. These, both of these memory and register are, 30, are 16 bits. These are both 8 bits and these are both 16-bit registers. This one causes an error because we're trying to exchange two variables. We're not able to exchange two variables. We can't have two variable operands in an exchange. Okay, direct offsetting, we looked at this also last time and um, we coded some direct offsetting. So in this example, we have this array called array B and it is an array that contains byte size data. So each of these separated by commas is one byte. So we have one, two, three, four bytes. This is a four byte array. Um, if you do four times eight, it's 32 bits. So this, this array contains 32 bits or four bytes. In this, in this instruction, we're taking, so array B, we know that the very, we saw last time that array B by itself just holds that 10 hexadecimal to get to the 20, so when you define this, all that you see in memory for array B is a 10. To get to the 20, you have to add one to the name of the array. To get to the 30, you have to add two. To get to the 40, you have to add one, two, three. So this is array B, this is array B plus one, array B plus two, array B plus three. Don't get confused, array B plus one is not 10. Array B plus 1 is 20. Here it shows you that you can use the brackets or not use the brackets. We've always been used to using brackets with arrays and it really just um, makes it more clear that this is an offset. So you'll see me use the brackets to make just to make clear that it's an offset. Um, so here it says a constant offset, this is the constant offset, plus one, is added to a data label, this is the data label, array B, to produce an effective address. Effective address, all that is saying is that it produces an address that gets you to some data. So this actually will get you an address where 20H or 20 hexadecimal lives. And array B plus 2 will give you the address of where 30 hexadecimal lives in memory. 
Remember that when you create arrays, the locations are adjacent to one another. They're really right next to another one another. So 10H, whatever that address is, right next to it is where 20H is, one byte away. And it's one byte away because you define it as a byte. If you define it as a word, it would be two bytes away. Okay. And here, uh, the question is, why does an array B plus 1 produce 11H? Well, we're not adding the 1 to the 10. We're adding 1 to the address of where array is found. So we're not adding 1 to these numbers in here. That's what it's making sure that you understand. So um, here we have array w array w of size word so word is um word is two bytes or 16 bits remember eight bits equals one byte 16 bits equals two bytes so word array is two bytes therefore if you want to get to the next element in your array the next value you have to add plus two so array w gets you to 1000 array w plus 2 gets you to 2000 h double word is four bytes so array d plus 4 gets you just to the to this right here to the one plus 4 gets you to the one so here we're moving 2000 to register AX, we're moving 3000 to register AX, we're moving um, 2 hex, so this 2 right here is getting moved to the register EAX. Um, EAX is 32 bits, array D is 32 bits. AX is 16 bits, array word is 16 bits because it's word size. So hopefully that's um, clear. It's kind of hard to understand. I just, I feel like I went really fast. So I'm just going to draw just something here real quickly. Just in case you can fast forward if you don't need this. So if this is array W, and array W is um, is 16 bits, because word is 16 bits, so 16 bits for each element. So this would be 16 bits, this would be 16. So this is 16 bits, 16 bits, 16 bits, right? And inside here, we have, let's do a different color. We have the numbers, this is array W, 1000 hexadecimal. I'll just put 1000, 2000, and 3000. Sorry, my numbers are not the best. Okay, so this is 3000, this is 2000. 16 bits equals to 2 bytes, 2 bytes, 2 bytes, 2 bytes. bytes. And bytes. Okay. So array W, without adding anything to it, array w gets you to this number here gets you to the thousand if i add two bytes to here i'm going to get to this number if i add four bytes i'm going to get to this number so i add two to the address of this plus two plus four the next would be plus six etc
Okay, so you're going to write a little program that defines an array of size double word with these three values. And you're going to then write the code to make array D um, arrange the values in array D to have 3, 1, 2 instead of 1, 2, 3. I wanted to show you what this would look like in memory. So if the memory location of this one is FFE0, to get to the two, you would add four bytes because this is a double word. Double word is 32 bits, which is four bytes. And then to get to the three, you have to add eight to the array. So you can pause this, try to write that, and then come back and um, I'll show you the code. So here's step one. Step one, you're going to copy the first value into EAX and then exchange it with the second, the value in the second position. So copy the first value, you're going to copy one into EAX and then exchange it with the value in the second position. So second position has a two. So this is a two now and second position is a one. So there's a one right here. This goes away and there's a one here. So now we have one, one, three in our array, but the two is saved in EAX. So two hasn't gone away, it's just in EAX. Okay, in step two, we're gonna exchange EAX with the third array value and copy the value in EAX to the first array position. So remember we had one, one, three. So we're gonna exchange EAX, which is a two, with array D plus A. Array D plus A gives us the three. So these two are gonna be exchanged. So this is gonna be a two, and this is gonna be a three. Then we're gonna move the three to array D, so the three gets moved here to the first position, and we we now have three, one, two. Okay, in this slide, we want to write a program that adds the following three bytes. So it adds 80 hexadecimal plus 66 hexadecimal plus 085 hexadecimal. It's gonna come out to a total of 180 three hex. No, sorry, it comes out to 18B. Okay, 18B. So I want you to pause it, um, evaluate these three lines, see if you can remember how to add the hexadecimal numbers, see if you understand this, and then unpause it and I'm gonna explain each line. So in the first line, we have a register called AL. Here's register AL. And in register AL, we're gonna put my bytes. So remember that uh, my bytes only points to the first element of the array. So AL has the value of 80 hexadecimal. And then we take my bytes plus one. This is my bytes plus one right here, 66. And we add it to 80. So let's add 80 plus 66. These are hexadecimal numbers, so it's base 16. So we have 6, and then 8 plus 6 is going to be 14, and 14 in hexadecimal is the letter E. Remember, A starts at 10. And we go through F through 15. So now AL no longer has 80, it has E6 hex. Okay, we're just going to have a zero in front of it. And then um, my bytes plus two offsets we get to here, to this element, and we're going to add it to the EBH, ECH, ECH, sorry, this is six. So E6 plus A5. I'm lost. There we go. 
Okay, so E6 is AL register, A5 is this uh, offset of the of my bytes. So now we're going to add 6 plus 5 is 11, which is the letter E. And then A plus E, so E is 14, A is 10, so that's 24. So remember this is base 16, right? If this was base 10, then we would write a 4 here and we would carry a 2, right? Because we'd carry 20, but or 200 actually. But anyway, in either case, we would put a 2 here, carry a 2, and we would put it a 4 here. But this is base 16, so we're going to subtract 16 from 24, and we're going to get 8, and we're going to carry 1. So we subtracted, this gave us 24, minus 16, because it's base 16. So what we have left is 8, carry 1. The 1 means that we're carrying 16, not just a 1, but 16. So 16 plus 8 is 24. And then we add 1 plus 0, and we get 1, 8, B as our answer. So this, this adds all three numbers together. It's just one way to do that. There's other ways, and I want you to just come up with those possibilities. Okay, on this slide, I want you to look at the code and see if there's anything that is missing. So you can pause it, look at each step, and see what's missing, and then unpause it. So here, I'm gonna start with moving my bytes into AX. We're doing CDR extension because AX is 16 bits and my bytes is eight. So we're moving eight into 16. So now AX has 80. And then we move my bytes plus one. So we move the 66 into BX. But notice we're just doing a simple move without the CX. So we either need to, there's two thing, There's two ways we can fix this. One, we can move zero into BX. So add a line above here and say MOV BX comma zero. Or we can just change this to CX. Then we add AX and BX. So we're adding 66 plus 80 because BX has um, 66. And then um, we move my bytes plus two into BX. So once again, we need to either change this to CX or um, move into BX a zero. So we can clear everything out and then, and then we're gonna add AX plus BX and get our total. So yes, there's something missing. Move zero to BX before the move. Um, so it's telling you to put it here, moving zero here. I guess you only need to do it one time. Move into BX, move a zero into BX, and then now it's zeroed out and yeah, you don't have to do it again. Or you can just use CX on both of these, or at least one of them. Okay. So there's that one. So this is another way that we can add the, the three numbers. Okay, so the next thing that we have is add and subtract, uh, review, add and subtract. And the instructions for add and subtract is ADD and SUB. We're also gonna look at INC and DEC, increment and decrement and the negate instruction. So these two are just um, review and these three are new. And then in a separate um, video, we're gonna look at how flags affect are affected by arithmetic and we're gonna look at it using Visual Studio. So I'm gonna do a separate video for this part. So, and we'll also do this on Visual Studio using negation, increment, and decrement, and look at the flags with that. So add, 
1 subtract 1 from destination operand. So add, it either adds 1 or subtracts 1 from destination operand. Operand may be register or memory. Increment, um, so if we say increment, we increment the destination by 1. Decrement, it um, decreases the destination by 1. So here we just need one operand for increment and decrement. That's it. Oh, this right here is just saying you add one and you subtract one for this. So here's an example. So we're moving um, this 00FF hexadecimal into AX. We're incrementing AX by one, so it increments to this number when we add one to FF. Remember, if you're adding 1 to FF, you need to know this for the exam, so that's why I want to keep reviewing it. Um, so F is 15, that's the last letter we have. We don't have a 16 available. So because it's base 16, we're going to do 0, carry the 16, right? And then once again is 16 so 0 carry the 16 carry 1 means you're carrying a unit of 16 and then 1 so that's how we get this number here then we're going to move so we incremented ax so now this is ax has the value of 100 hexadecimal now we're going to move ffh into ax so now it's back to FFH um, I'm thinking maybe they meant to say AL here maybe um, not Because in the increment AL, and there's no AL. Not really sure what they were trying to do here. Okay, let's go to the next slide. Okay, so here we have show the value of the destination operand after each of the following instruction executes. So if you want to, um, don't look at the right side and do these on your own and then come back and check them. So I'm going to go step by step on these. So it says move my byte into AL. So AL gets FFH. Move my byte plus one zero into AH. So AH has zero hexadecimal. Decrease AH. So when we decrease AH, we're actually make we're subtracting one. So it's going to be a negative one. And um, for it to be a negative one, we would have FF in front of our H. And then increase AL. So AL has FFH. So if we increase it, it goes up to zero H. And then decrease AX. And there is no AX here. So. I don't know where that number comes from because I don't see an AX anywhere. Okay. So add and subtract instructions. So we already have done this. Add, you have a destination and a source. You add these two values and the new value gets stored in the destination. Same thing with subtraction. Take this, take it away from here, and then store it here. Same operand rules as the move. You can have, um, so in add, this side right here, the destination can only be a memory or a variable. The source can be memory, variable, or immediate value. Destination can only be memory or variable. Source can be memory, variable, or immediate value. 
So what that means is that you can say add and you can have uh, like var, var one on this side and you can have a constant right here. You can have a register on this side and you can have another register here or constant or variable. Here you can have a register or uh, this constant five, but you cannot have you cannot have two variables. You can't say add var one to var two. That's just like with the move statement. That's illegal action. <laughs> Doesn't let you do that. Okay, we're going to stop here and I want to use Visual Studio to look at negate and also increase and decrease so we can look at the different flags that get set. So